can be a worthy vessel, Lord, of thy word today. I pray that you will speak to our hearts, that we may see where we are at, at your uh, will, O God, and that if there are things that must be mended or fixed in our lives, help us, Lord, to see them, so that we can ask your help, because only you can fix us. We cannot fix ourselves, and nobody can fix us, O God, but only you, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And even today, Lord, as we study, Lord, the word that uh, was read a while ago regarding the exploit of David while facing the giant, Lord, I pray that we are going to have the same thing that David had during that time, that he was able to slay the giant, that he was able to gain the victory, that he was able to lift up your name in the midst of a generation, Lord, who defied your name, who are cowering under their leader, O oh God, who at the same time is trembling because of lack of faith, because of sin and unbelief. I pray, Lord, that we will find the courage, that we will always remember your promises, and that we are going to hold on, Lord, to thy word, that if we are going to put our faith and trust in you, O oh God, we can always have the victory because of you. Help me, Lord, as I preach, because there is nothing in me that is worthy to preach your word. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will use me today so that I can be a blessing to your people. If there is one who is not, your say, not yet saved today, I pray, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will convict them of sin and of righteousness. That at the end or before the end of this message, salvation, Lord, will come to their hearts. We thank you, O God, once again for your love. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you very much. So we are going to study today about facing the giants. Facing the giants, or in this a particular uh, a section that we have read in 1 Samuel chapter 17, uh, David specifically faced a giant named Goliath. And it was something that is uh, so amazing that we can see the power of God throughout the life of David, especially in this particular event in his life. So before I continue preaching this, I would like to give uh, something that represents uh, some, of the, uh, uh, some of the characters here that represent something that is going on in our world today. So number one, we can see a giant named Goliath, and we will make him to represent the raging world that is seeking to destroy all that is good and godly. The raging world that is seeking to destroy all that is good and godly. And then there is Israel that we will make to represent a fearful and trembling Christians who believe God, but through weakness of faith, unable to conquer in God's name. Okay? Siguro, plastic na lang next time para walang sound. Parang ano, bell, tama na. Umpisa pa lang tayo. Amen. Nasaan ako? Israel. Okay. Represents the Christians who's, uh, who believes God, but through weakness of faith, unable to conquer in God's name. And then, of course, there is David, and we will make him to represent the Christians whose faith is in God and whose dependence is in the power of God. So we can see here, here three characters that will uh, play a big part in our message today. But then of course, behind all of this is God, who is always present throughout all history and throughout the lives of those people who believe in Him. So we can see here a story that is so interesting that even the Sunday school children can relate to. It is a story of David, uh, slaying Goliath and a story of longtime enemies Israel and the Philistine. We can see that in uh, verses uh, 1 to 4 of this chapter, Goliath took 
uh, center stage and took control of the situation. During that time, this battle is what we call a representative battle. They are not going uh, in a battle head to head, but they sent a representative in order to fight for their particular nation or for their particular army. So, in this particular time, the Philistine had a champion, and his name is Goliath. He was a huge person. His height is uh, approximately 10 feet, about 9 8, almost the height of a basketball ring. And he is uh, about four times a, uh, uh, the width of a regular person. So we can see that there is a person who is so huge and so battle tested that is representing the Philistines. And because of his advantage, he marked the armies of Israel in 1 Samuel 17, 8 to 10. Can we look at that, please? In verses 8 to 10. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he, if he be able to fight with me and kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. So the situation is very discouraging. The circumstances are very dark. But ladies and gentlemen, no matter how bad it is, God will always come true. God will always raise up a man in order to lift up the standard and defeat the enemy. When God has no people of his own, he raised up Abraham to be the father of faith. When there is famine in the land, he called Joseph in order to preserve the people of Israel. When they were in captivity, he raised up Daniel, who purposed in his heart that he will not defile himself. And he remained true and was able to become one of the uh, official over there in Babylon. When people are bowing down to other gods, he raised up Ma Ma uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who at the rest of their lives stood up and served and worshipped only the true and the living God. And when people are worshipping Baal, he raised up Elijah and Elisha and Gideon. And during the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, he raised up the apostles, Paul and Peter, that they may be able to lift up the standard of God, so that no matter how dark the situation may be, the light of the Lord Jesus Christ will shine into the heart of people. Amen? Amen. And in this particular situation, there was David. God raised up a person who will lift up the name of God during this dark time in the history of Israel. David was a young shepherd boy. There was an impending war between the Philistines and the Israelites. And David had several brothers in the armies of Israel. He was asked by his father Jesse to bring a take out McDonald's to his brothers that are over there in the heat of the battle or at the forefront of the battle. So he went there and he saw that there is there are people in array ready for the battle. And because he was a young person and wanted to uh, uh, have an adventure in faith, he actually approached the, uh, the uh, king Saul and he said, why is this man mocking and defying the armies of Israel? Why is this man being allowed to shout vindictives against the people of God? He is actually telling Saul, King Saul, if you are a man of God, why not go there and kill this Philistine? If you are the king of Israel, why not go there and fight this battle that we may be able to lift up the name of God? But ladies and gentlemen, 
in this story, we can see that Saul did not do anything. We can see that Saul is actually hiding and so afraid that he cannot face Goliath in his life. So to make the long story short, David went out, killed Goliath, lived up the name of God, gave the victory to Israel, and the people of Israel knew that there is a God in Israel. Amen? And David became victorious. The end. Tapos na. Patay ni Goliath. So ano pagagawin natin? But we're going to study some things that David used or some things that David do in order to defeat the giant in his life. Number one, we can see here that David used courage in order to face the giant. David used courage in order to face the giant. You see, it is very hard to face a giant without courage. Amen? If you are a fearful person, then you are just going to hide. You will cower under uh, things that may protect you because only courageous people are able to stand or withstood the giants in our lives. You see, courageous people are in demand in every field of endeavor. But it takes danger to bring out courage. You see, sometimes people are so courageous when there is no danger. People will say that they are uh, courageous people when there is no impending danger. But ladies and gentlemen, when danger arises, then that is the time that you will see courageous people. Amen. Amen. So we can see that during the time when the king of Babylon are asking the people to worship the uh, statue that he made, when the music were played, then there were three people who stood and did not bow to that image and those three young people are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their courage stood up because of the presence of danger. You see, minsan, matapang ka lang pag wala namang kalaban. Para bang police may nagputukan doon, doon ang takbo. Asan ang mga kalaban? Eh, doon pumutok, doon ka tumakbo, paano mo makikita? So, courageous people are in demand. Even young ladies, if you're looking for a boyfriend, you want a courageous person, amen? Mayroon naman ang boyfriend mo, duwag. Naglalakad kayo, biglang may pumutok, lumundag, nagpakarga sa'yo. May pangit naman nun. O kaya may aso, nauna pang tumakbo. At iniwang ka doon. So courageous people are in demand. Courageous people are those people who will stay even though there is danger. So danger will uh, bring out the courage in a person but also danger will reveal the weakness in a person it will not only reveal that you are courageous but it will also reveal that you are a weak person like in uh, the life of King Saul why was Saul so afraid when Goliath was defying the armies of Israel don't you know that the tallest person during that time in Israel is King Saul. His height is about 8 feet. 8 feet tall. The reason when he was chosen as the king, he stood above all the people of Israel. So if there is a person who can match Goliath, that person is King Saul. But why was Saul uh, afraid during that time? Do you know why? Because he disobeyed God. A Christian who disobeyed God will become a fearful Christian. Amen? You cannot claim the promise of God. You cannot claim the protection of God. You cannot claim that God will always be with you if your life is characterized by disobedience. Mahirap sabihin na, Panginoon, ay pagpapalain ako ng Diyos kung hindi ka matapat sa paglilingkod sa ating Panginoon. Your disobedience will bring out the weakness in you. Why was Saul afraid? Because he was commanded by God to kill the Amalekites. But he did not kill the, the fat animals. And he did not kill King Agag. And he disobeyed God. And Samuel came and he said, God has rejected you. Because incomplete disobedience, our obedience is disobedience before God. 
You see, when we obey God, we need to obey God in everything in our life. You do not just obey God in areas where you want to obey God, but when God said it, it may be contrary to your ear, you may be inconvenienced, it may not be according to your liking, but ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Christian, obey God no matter what. Amen. That is what we need to do as people of God. Even though he's the only one who can face Goliath as the, at this particular time. You see, God wants us to be courageous. He wants us to have courage, courage in appropriate time and situation. There are wrong courage. Merong, merong matapang, ligaw ng ligaw. Kahit sino, nililigawan. Wrong courage yun, amen? <laughs> Kahit sino na lang, napakapakal ng mo, napakakapakal, napakakapal! <laughs> ng mukha at kahit sino na lang ay liligawan that is a wrong courage and then yung mahilig makipag-away that is wrong courage you see we are not wrestling against flesh and blood but our battle is a spiritual battle so if you are courageous do it in preaching the word of God if you are courageous do it in presenting the word of God if you are courageous do it in exposing what is wrong if you are courageous do it in facing the false teachers but ladies and gentlemen Courage in our physical prowess is something that God will not appreciate. Amen. We must be spiritually courageous because of the grace and the power of God. So courage must be applied on good things. Parang yun eh, tapang eh. Lasing siya eh. Lumabas eh. Sinong matapang dyan? Labas! Gabi na eh, walang tao. Sino? Labas! Eh, may lumabas na akong katawan. Ako! Bakit? Matapang ka! Oh, bakit? Dalawa na tayo, ha? Tara, hanap tayo ng iba. Sino ba matapang dyan? Eh, hindi ganun. Dapat yung tapang mo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Amen? Amen. Hindi nagtatapang-tapangan ka pag nakakawa ka ng kamats mo, bahag naman ang buntot mo. So you apply courage in the right way and in good things and preaching. You be courageous. You see, sometimes you water down the preaching. Why? You are afraid of the people. You do not want them to get hurt even if they are committing sin in their lives. Eh, kasi pastor, malakas magbigay eh. Baka pag natisod, umalis. Mawala ng pera in church. Ladies and gentlemen, our money comes from God. They do not come from people. Kapag ka miyembro, kahit malakas magbigay, ay sinungaling. Sabihin mo, masama ang magsinungaling. Kasalanan ang manigarilyo. Kasalanan ang uminom. Kasalanan ang chismis. Kasalanan ang pakikipag-away. Kasalanan ang pangangalo niya. Kasalanan ang hindi pagkatay. Kasalanan ang anumang bagay na hindi ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. And if you are living in that kind of life, then you are not right with God. So use the courage in preaching the word of God. Hindi naman yung tira ka ng tira at wala ka naman pagmamahala sa tao. Sabi ko nga, sabunin mo kung kailangan. Amen? Pero banlawan mo bago umuwi. Eh, sabon ka lang ng sabon eh. Uuwi yan ng puno ng sabon. Paano pang babalik yan? Madudulas na yan pag uwi at hindi na makakabalik. So we need to show people their sins as well as my sin and we need to show the remedy for the sin that we can live according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. I was reminded of uh, one of the general during the Cold War when he was invited by a uh, general from Russia. He was a Christian. I forgot his name. But when they were there at the table and they would start a meeting on how to resolve the Cold War, the Russian distributed vodka because that is the national drink of Russia. And it was distributed to all the people that were there. And then he saw that this general is not attaching his vodka. And then the, gen the Russian general took notice of this and he said, Sir, in my house, everybody drinks. So you need to drink that. And then the American general said, Sir, I am a Christian. 
And in my house, nobody drinks. I'm not going to drink it. Let's talk about how to resolve the cold war. Amen? Amen. So you must be courageous. You must be able to stand up for what is right, no matter what it takes. You see, sometimes we Christians, we compromise in order to get favor from other people. Like why, what I'm telling you a while ago, my, during uh, some time ago, he was very bold to say that politics is something that a preacher should not be involved in. And then yesterday, he was singing a new song. He was singing a new tune. He was dancing to a different music. And he said, I don't see anything wrong with this pastor who is running for Congress. He said, if you cannot do it, he can do it. If you do not have the ability to do it, he has the ability. He was, he was sitting there. He has the ability to do it. If you, cannot, if you do not want to vote for him, do not say anything against him. Let people vote for him. Why is he singing a different tune? Because he was invited to preach in a sacred pulpit that I do not know why it became more sacred than other pulpits in the world. You see, if you are a child of God, you must be courageous in standing for what is right. Amen? So you must have courage in claiming the promises of God in your life. Do not uh, depend on people if you're serving God. Depend on God. If you're serving God, be courageous to glorify God and not to please people. You see, sometimes, as I said a while ago, we watered down the message. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a nobody, but I don't care who you are. If you are wrong, you are wrong. If I am wrong, I am wrong. Let God be true. And every man a liar. That is what the Bible says. So courage is something that David used in order to defeat the Goliaths of life. So why are we not courageous when we ought to be? As I have said, number one, because of sins in our lives. When a Christian is living in sin, it is very hard for him to be courageous in the sight of God. Amen? Because we knew deep down in our hearts that God may not help us because of the sin that we are doing in our lives. But here, David showed his courage that even as a young man, he is willing to face Goliath in a battle. If you're going to look at the, uh, at the size, the mere size of David and Goliath, you will say that there is no chance that David will be able to beat Goliath. You will say that there is not even a journeyman's chance that he is going to be victorious. But ladies and gentlemen, you cannot count God out. Because God is a champion. And no matter what happens, God will vindicate his name. So let us be courageous. Even in the face of persecution, there must be courage. Even when we're facing problems, there must be courage. Even in difficulties, we must be willing to sacrifice that others may live. So that we can serve God in everything that we do. We can glorify the name of God. Amen? Amen. Even in our downfall, we must have the courage to stand up and keep serving God. You see, may some problem. Pag nagkamali ka, parang yun ang katapasan ng mundo. Hindi ko sinasabi na magkamali tayo. Pero kapatid, pag nagkamali ka, our God is a God of a second chance. Our God is a God of many chances. You repent of your sin. You forsake your sin. You stand up and you move forward serving God. Why? Because God can still use you even though you are a broken branch. God can use people that may have uh, fell into sin. David is a prime example. He committed adultery. He committed murder. He showed pride. But in spite of all these things, he stood up, repented of his sins, and continually served God in his life. So you see, the devil will tell you that when you commit mistake, that is the end of you. But God is telling us that is the beginning of your wisdom because if you will learn from your mistake, you will stand up a better person than before. Amen? The point is courage. Are you going to stand up? Are you going to sacrifice 
for the glory of God. Let us apply the principle of purpose. You make a resolution in advance. Like, like for example, you, you try to picture what may happen in the future. And if it will happen, how are you going to respond? Like for example, you were a former drunkard. You got saved. And then it happens that you went into a place where your drinking bodies are. And they will call for you and invite you and ask you to drink. How are you going to respond? Picture your response in your mind now before it even happened. Rehearse what you're going to tell them before it will ever happen. Because sometimes when you are put on the spot, you may do something foolish that you will regret for the rest of your life. Rehearse. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm now a Christian. And as a Christian, my body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to defile God's temple by drinking wine. So I'm sorry. Instead, listen to what I'm going to tell you. And witness to them. By the grace of God, you are a young person. You got saved. Your parents are unsaved. And they may ask you to buy a cigarette. They may ask you to buy a beer or a wine. In, uh, in the store, what are you going to answer your parents when that particular thing happened in your life? Rehearse it. Tell them, Father, you know that I love you. You know that I will do anything for you except this. Because if I will do this, then I am aiding you to destroy your body. And I love you so much that I cannot obey you in this one. I respect you. But I just could not be an agent of your destruction. So you practice. What will happen? Make a holy resolution in advance before it actually happens. You, you, you tell yourself, I am going to serve God for the rest of my life. Problems may come. Persecution may come. But I am going to stay by the grace of God. Amen. I will keep on serving God. God put me in this church and I will stay in this church even though we have problems. I am going to still be a part of this church and even when the rapture comes, I will stay here. Ah, kayo na lang. Pag rapture, alis na tayo. Huwag na kayong magstay. Sobra naman kayo. Walang... Yung carries based on the knowledge of the Word of God. Amen? Rapture na, magstay pa rin kayo. Kayo na lang. Ako, alis na ako. Amen? Bahala na kayo. Sa inyo na to. Yan, yan. Kunin nyo na yan. yan. Sa system deyo, sa inyo na yan. Pero pag rapture, alis na tayo. Amen? But we can see that David used his courage in order to defeat the Goliath in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, question. Are you courageous? When you are facing things in life. When you are facing compromise. Are you going to be courageous? Are you going to stand up for what is right? You see, this is our problem. While we are here, we study about the word of God. We contend for the faith. We are so firm in our belief according to the scriptures. And then you will go home. And you will stay in your former church and then all of a sudden you will go back to the past and you will forget everything that we have stood for in this church why because you do not want to be inconvenienced and you will live in compromise diba ito nakakalungkot dito alam mo pero mga kapatid alam naman ninyo you know this very well that if you will only stick to the truth and stand for the truth, even your former pastors in the Philippines, those who went back, cannot answer the truth from the word of God. So why do you have to be afraid? Why do you have to be fearful? Ulitin ko nga, Sister Nancy, nung narito, tahi-tahimik lang. Parang akala mo, hindi naman talaga ganun ka-involved. 
Habi yung umuwi ng Pilipinas, kinausap ng graduate ng Bible School, hindi siya masagot. At ang sabi niya pa, ang gusto ko nga makausap, si pastor, hindi ikaw. Why? Because the truth is something that is absolute and no matter who it is that is not standing according to the truth will fall for the truth. Amen? Ito sabi ng pastor ko, this is the truth. The truth is always standing. This is false. What is false and erroneous must bow down to the truth. But you know, sometimes we bow the truth down to that which is wrong and to that which is erroneous. Why? Because you are fearful, you are afraid, you are a coward, and you cannot stand for what is right. Isan ang tapak natin, ginagamit lang natin do sa kaya natin. We must use courage in order to defeat the Goliaths in our lives. Amen? So David used courage to face Goliath. Number two, he used memory. He used memory in order to defeat the giant in his life. As David faced Goliath, memory of God's working came into his mind. When Saul tried to discourage David to fight, David said in verses 34 to 37, you see, when David approached Saul about Goliath, he said, no, you cannot fight Goliath. You are young, and he's a veteran in warfare. You cannot defeat him. Look at the conversation, look at the answer of David. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. You see, you are about to face a warrior, and then he said, I'm a shepherd. That is my credential. I will fight a warrior by being a shepherd. But in him, being a shepherd, because he served God, God did something in his life that gave him courage and to remember what God will do in the face of this trying situation. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. You see, I'm a shepherd, but I slew a lion and a bear with my bare hands. You see, only Samson did the same thing. But David said, I was able to slay it. And then, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. You know what David is saying? How can I ever kill a lion? Look at me. I am young. Look at me. I'm not that strong. How can I ever slay a bear? A bear is something that is so huge and so strong. But what is the reason why I was able to slew a lion and a bear? And he said, And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. 37. And this is what David said. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Amen. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. You see, he used his memory. He said, I remember, I killed a lion. He said, I remember, I killed a bear. If I was able to kill a lion, and I was able to kill a bear, I will be able to kill a giant in the name of the Lord. Amen? And because of that, he convinced Saul that he go and fight Goliath. Listen, have you noticed that Saul did not remember the heroes of the faith who became great before him. He has forgotten about Elisha. He has forgotten about Moses. When God parted the Red Sea in order for the Israelites to escape the, the fangs of 
the uh, Egyptian. He has forgotten uh, about the exploit of Gideon and of Daniel and of Abraham. He has forgotten that they were able to already subdue 31 nations and kings in Canaan because of the power of God. You see, one serious mistake that we have as, as Christians is when we are faced with trials and calamities and temptations, we fail to remember what God has done for us. Listen, if God saved me from hell, what is it for God to save me from my enemies, from hunger, from thirst, from any problems that we will encounter in life? Ano tayo lang kapatid? Iniligtas nga tayo ng Diyos sa impyerno eh. Sa gutom pa. Sa problema pa. Sa asawa mo pa na hindi nananampalataya sa Panginoon. Sa mga kaibigan mo pa na hindi nagtitiwala sa Diyos. Sa pamilya mo pa na hinahadlangan ka sa paglilingkod mo sa Panginoong Diyos, sa sino man tao na makakaharap mo kung ang Diyos binigay niya ang kanyang buktong na anak at namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, ano ang dahilan? Bakit nilikayang ibigay ng Diyos ang pangangailangan mo sa buhay? We only remember those things that can discourage us and not those things that will encourage us. Ladies and gentlemen, I experienced so many problems in my life, but I always go back to the day when I repented of my sins and accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I said to myself, if God saved me from hell, then it is nothing to God to save me from this situation that I am facing right now in my life. Amen? He remembered the goodness of God. He remembered the exploit of God. And I remember that God never fails. Amen. Amen. I remember that God will never leave me nor forsake me. I may forsake God, but He will always be there. I might turn my backs on God, but He will always be there. I might not be faithful to God, but God will always be faithful to Himself and to His Word. I may try try to run away from God, but God will always be with me. And ladies and gentlemen, if I will only use my memory about the goodness of God, then there is nothing that can discourage me in serving the Lord in my life. Mga kapatid, nag-start kami ng gawain, wala kaming support. Kasi nakikita nyo ngayon, uy, si pastor, may sasakyan. Uy, si pastor, ganito, ganun, ang gaganda ng damit. Kita mo, nakapink pa siya. Uy, si pastor, ganito, ganun. Mga kapatid, labing dalawang taon, pakinggan nyo, 12 years, almost with no support, with three children. But we serve God. And you know, no matter what happens, do you know why, why is it that we are not going to leave the ministry no matter what happens? Because when there is nothing, God sustained us how much more that God is blessing now. Amen. That will He not sustain. You see, masyado tayo kasing didoso without God instead of trusting God. If you will only commit in your memory everything that God has done in your life, then there is nothing that can make you stop from serving God. Let us use the principle of progression. You see, David... He killed a bear. He killed a lion. He killed Goliath. And then as you progress, God will make you slay greater giants than what you have slain before. Amen? The Bible says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. If, we were, if he was able to conquer Goliath, then there is nothing that he cannot conquer in his life. Amen? And then number three, pangwakas. Amen. I've been rejoicing. Sana kahapon yun. Maiksi. Kahapon, mahaba. Number one, he uses what? Courage. We need to be courageous. Number two, he uses? Memory. And number three, he used faith. 
David has faith in God. Listen, his skill did not win the victory for him, but his faith. Look at verses 45 to 47. This is very powerful. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. You see, Goliath is not actually holding the shield. Somebody is holding the shield for him. Ganun katindi si Goliath. When he's about to face David, the one bearing the shield of Goliath went first. So the shield was even first. It is between David and Goliath. And he said, with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. No shield, no bearer, no sword, nothing that you can think that I can defeat you with. But he said, I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. David is saying, Goliath, listen to me. I am not here because of me. I am not here in order to elevate myself. I am not here so that people will see how great I am. I am coming to you in the name of God. And because I am coming in the name of God, you will be doomed today. That is what David is saying. Look at 46. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, the Lord. Not I will kill you. Before this, Goliath said, I am going to kill you. I am going to give your, your body to the fowls of the air. Goliath is looking at himself. Goliath is looking at his own power. But David said, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. I cannot defeat you. I am no match. I cannot destroy you. I am a nobody. But I am coming to you in the name of the Lord. And I will smite thee. Why? Because the Lord will deliver you out of my hand. And take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air. Not only you, Goliath, but the whole armies of Israel. He said, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know. What's the reason? What's the purpose? That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. What's the purpose? Not for David to usurp soul. Hindi pakitang, oh, ako nang next na hari, ah. Mas magaling ako kesa kay soul, no. So that people will know that there is a God in Israel. He's doing this not for himself but for the glory of God. And look at verse number 47. I like this. And all this assembly shall know. Sino yung assembly? Yung armies of Israel. Yung mga nangangatok sa takot. Yung mga nagtatago. Yung mga nanginginig. Yung mga walang magawa. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is of the Lord's and he will give you into our hands when we contend for the faith it is not because we are better than them it is not because we know more than them it is because we rely on the wisdom of God kaya ano ikakatakot mo anong aalalahanin mo Baka sumikip ang mundo ko. Ina-unfriend na ako. Ayaw na akong kausapin. Kinagagalitan na ako. Kaya maglalaylo ako, hindi ho. This is the battle of the Lord. This is not our battle. We just have to be there so that God can use us in order to defeat His enemies when it comes to faith. Amen? Amen. So David believed that God was with him. He said, if God be for us, then who can be against us? Saul looked to himself, and his knee trembled. Israel looked to their leader, and they were dismayed and became afraid. Goliath looked at himself and boasted, 
and then he later died. But David looked unto Jesus. And because he looked unto Jesus, then he won the victory. Amen? Christians, don't look to yourselves. Because no matter who you are, or what you are, or what you have, God can use you to topple the Goliaths along the way. Sabi nila, wala kang katalinuhan, wala ako mapapala sa iyo. Kapatid, magtiwala ka sa Diyos. Ikaw ang magiging pinakamatalinuhan tao sa buong mundo. They may look down at you, but God can use you. Nakita niyo na ba yung pastor na, there was this pastor who is blind, who, who is blind. Uh, he, I think he's pastoring in uh, Batangas or, or a Quezon. I mean, Dora, what's the name? Pastor Tisoy, because he's a uh, white skin, anak araw eh. And that's what they call him. He, he, he is blind. You know what he does? He memorizes his preaching. He, mem- he memorizes all the verses. Do you know why? Because he cannot read it. Because he's blind. So he has to memorize everything. And you know, he is very effective whenever he preaches the word of God. Amen. And sometimes he even see, I can see you, listen. <laughs> he's even prophetical in his preaching why? people may look down at him and say you will amount to nothing, you are blind but ladies and gentlemen even though you are blind, if you have Jesus you can see more than those people that are not blind you can see more truth, why? because God can use you if you have faith in him you see, they will say that you will amount to nothing. But ladies and gentlemen, no matter who you are or what you are, if you have faith in God, then God can give you the victory. David is no match for Goliath. David is so small compared to Goliath. David has no experience in battle compared to Goliath. But because David trusted in God, God gave David the victory. Amen? So, mga kapatid, ganun din. Magtiwala tayo sa Diyos. Hindi sa ating sarili. Hindi sa akin, hindi sa iyo. Sa Diyos. And if we are in the hands of God, listen, if we are in the hands of God, we are going to be victorious. There was this uh, group of botanists who went to Africa. And while they are going around Africa, there was a cliff that so steep but in that cliff, there's a very rare flower that the botanist saw. And they said, we need to get that flower. But they couldn't reach it. And the slope is uh, very steep. And it's very hard for them to reach that. So they saw a local African boy, and they said, boy, come here. We're going to give you $100 to get that flower for us. This is what we're going to do. We have a rope. We will tie that rope around your waist, and slowly, we will let you down until you reach the flower. And then get that flower, we will pull you up, give it to us, and we will give you $100. And then the boy said, wait, I will come back. And then the boy went, and then he brought his father with him. He said, what is your father doing here? I want my father to hold the rope for me. Because no matter what happened, my father will never let go. I may become very uh, heavy because of the, uh, the gravity and all of these things. But even if the circumstances will become very, very hard, I know that my father will hold on to that rope no matter what happens. And then I will go there and get that flower for you. Ladies and gentlemen, if we are doing things for God, and we know that we are in the hands of God. You listen to me. There is nothing. To the Philippines for a month. And I saw what is happening in many areas and in many circles in the Philippines. So many people are compromising the faith. So many people are drifting away from the truth. Listen, 
the Lord has given us a measure of that truth. And as he gave it to us, it goes with it a great responsibility that we are a steward of that truth. And listen to me, it is not easy to dispense that truth. It is not easy to contend for the faith. But ladies and gentlemen, if we will go there in the name of the Lord, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish. First fruits giving is being preached in almost 90% of the churches in the Philippines. And we found out from the word of God, it is not true. It is not given to the church. Transfer of membership is being preached as not biblically anymore. But we found out that even the Apostle Paul transferred this membership. And it's going to be hard because people are trying to protect their own interests. But ladies and gentlemen, we are here to lift up and protect the interests of God. So don't be afraid. Let us go out there and let us keep on proclaiming the truth. Yes, we will be facing giants. We saw that. We were maligned, we were mocked, we were thrown mad. They did almost everything to discredit us. But we want to stand for what is right. And if we will stand for what is right using courage, using our memory, and then putting our faith in God, then all the giants that we are going to face like Goliath will topple down and we will be able to lift up the name of God and the truth so that people may know in this earth that there is a God in his word. Amen? Amen. And we will keep on keeping on because we want to serve God until the day that we die. Shall we stand up please?